So when I left off on the last video, I was just completing a shape with the pin tool in vector.com. And the way I was using the pin tool, which you can always look at the tutorials for, right, was you just click and move. You don't click and drag, you just click and move, and you'll make straight lines. But you have to finish it where you started it, or at least you should finish it where you started it. That's called an open path. We want closed paths. So let me sh demonstrate another closed path, because it's there for me. I can see it right here. That's a closed path. And as long as I have a closed path, at any time, I can select it, and I can fill it with a color. In this case, black. All right. Layers. Let me turn back on my sketch. Now, I can also at any time unlock my sketch by double clicking on it and take the opacity even lower. Because my, my uh, sketch is pretty clear, so I don't need a lot to see where the edges are. Now, let me make another shape just with that pen tool. I'm going to lock my sketch. I'm going to use the pen tool. I don't need to make a new layer or anything. Any new path you make will automatically be its own layer. And I'm just going to click, move, click, move, click, move, make it all out of straights. Click, move, click, move, click, move, click, move, click, move. Until I get to the end and it's a complete closed path. And then I can fill it with a color. All right, click off of it. Command plus will zoom in. Holding down the space bar will help you move around, just like it does in Photopea. So now here's the trick. Unless your design is all straights, you might want curves. So how do you actually do curves with the pin tool? Well, the truth is you can always double click on it and you can modify these anchors after the fact. And one of the easiest ways to modify these anchors is to use what are called these corner tools. So every place I did a straight point, an anchor, there's a little corner that if I wanted to, I could soften into a curve. And I get to decide how much. That's one way. It's a quite effective way to turn things into curves. Also, if there are anchor points I don't think I need, I can double click them, I can move them, and if you double click them, it turns them into curves with Bezier handles. This is what is in that video. Bezier handles allow you to angle the curve, and if you hold down, I believe it's shift, you can change them at different proportions, like this. Woo. Look at that crazy vector go. And if I hold down command, I can even change the angle of the curve. All from that Bezier handle. Or I can use the pen tool. Ah, nope. I'm wrong. <laughs> I mostly use Illustrator. All right. Or I can just go to the top of the pages, double click on it to get all my anchors. And then, there's a way to delete the anchor point. I thought you, oh, you just hit delete. Okay, so you click on it, and then you can just hit delete, and you can get rid of the anchor point altogether, and then it will average between your existing anchor points. So if I want to get rid of this anchor point, I could click it and hit delete, right? And then it will average between the existing. So I can use these curves, because I like curves in my, in my logo design. And if I don't want the anchor point, I can just click on it until it turns blue and then hit delete. And then if I want the Bezier handles, right, I double click on it so I can see all the anchor points. Like so. And then I click on it, double click on it, and it will give you those, those handles. If I want to add an anchor point, I can just click on the path anywhere and it will add one. And I can use handles. This is what's kind of cool, but a little bit hard to get used to. If you click on one to add one, and it's already curved on one side like this one is, 
then it will already have handles. So you don't have to modify it. But you can also click and drag it and make it really clean. I actually like this pen tool in Vector.com a lot better than the pen tool in Illustrator. But it can be tricky when you're using a combination of the pen tool and the, the corner tools. Because you want to average them out. You don't want to end up with those like weird little bumps. right? So that's where you can hold shift down to change your sizes. Or command down just to change your whole angle. And you can always just move the anchor point, and you can always just delete it if it's not working out. So the point of good vector design is to actually use as few anchor points as necessary. You can also hold down command and shift one corner to be straight and the other to be rounded. <laughs> right? It's like a mixed handle. And this red border around it just helps me kind of see what it's doing, but I can always turn that off. Now, I just did a lot of things, and it ended up making a lot of anchor points. So if I'm going to do this again, I might use a different tool, like the pencil tool. And the pencil tool, you can just draw your shape, just freehand. And then double click on it, but it will plot a thousand anchor points, <laughs> which doesn't give you the cleanest look. So the pencil tool is my favorite tool in Adobe Illustrator. It is my least favorite tool in Vector.com because it's kind of terrible. Just because it plots way too many anchor points to clean up. I could delete them all day and they would take forever. Right? But if you're really having trouble drawing something with the pen tool, then you can use the pencil tool instead. So let me try to be really efficient with this. Instead of only doing straights, I can do straights to start with, and then I can click and drag to get the Bezier handles. But then it's going to come out with a curve, which is a little annoying, before it goes to a straight again. But remember, all you have to do is double click to see them, and then you can modify these individual points to your heart's content. And you can double click and change them from straights to curves, and then you can modify the curves, and if you hold down Command, you can change the angle of the curves coming out of it. Or if you do shift, you can even them out. Mostly you want even curves, but. Or you can just use the rounding tool, which is pretty nice, pretty helpful. So once I have kind of a shape that I think is a nice version of the shape I want, it's almost there. Maybe right there. Then I can fill it with black, click off of it, and now I've got one clean shape. So, what about this one? Well, what I can do is I can take its opacity down. So I can see it clearly, and now I want to modify it. I'm going to double click on it so I can see all those anchors. And now I'm just going to double click and delete some of these, like every other one basically, and then turn this into curves. Oops, I was clicked off. So, so much of vector programs are about really precise selecting. So the mouse is better than your tablet for this. But once you have the curves, then I can kind of stretch out that wing on both sides. Then I can click on this one, delete it, then I can make this one into curves. And I can move this one all the way in while holding down Command. So I can control it on this side. 
and it takes a lot of practice, but this is how you get control of vector shapes. And if you don't want to mess with the curves, you can just use that cornering tool. And you can just click on it. Once it's blue, you can hit delete. I wish Illustrator had that. That's great. You double click to get curves. And you can hold down command to change the curves on each side. Double click to get curves, hold down command to change the curve on each side. There's the cornering tool there. There's the cornering tool here. Use the corner tool. It's basically to soften corners, right? Because for this bone, I can just simplify it with these corner tools. And once you all get your refined sketches into the program, I can help you figure out the best use of these freeware tools for it. But you will come to love it because ha having a way of making vectors for free gives you so much control is a real gift. Hmm. All right, so once you think you have your shape, then I can take it up to 100% opacity. And now I have two shapes. Yes, they are some of the easier shapes. But they are done. And they can always be modified. Double click. And I could curve this if I want. Pretty easily. Because that might look a little better. I might just go for kind of a kidney shape. Hold down command. There we go. Need to move that back a little bit. And then you can always undo. Command Z will undo your steps. Yeah, I think that's pretty good. All right. And you'll kind of feel it out as you go. So how do we save our work? I hope I have a little bump on this. So I'm going to round that one out. There we go. Round this one out. Maybe I can even just delete that. I'll figure it out. All right, how do I save? It's a good question. So first I'm going to export. So you use this little arrow here. And then you say download. You're going to download it as an SVG. That is what stands for Scalable Vector Graphic. We're going to see where that goes. It goes to downloads, so this SVG. And then next time you, if I go to my home, because you signed in, it should remember your project, but you can always uh, open a file and then go to your desktop. And find that SVG and open it into vector.com. So SVGs are a scalable vector graphic, but it's not going to remember your settings, right? When you